Hello. Hi, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Oh, I can hear myself. So, we're going to carry on with our survival horror from scratch today. Wow, kind of tired today, but I'm sure we'll get some stuff done. So, last time we were making these camera changes uh, using the camera samples and we've got room changing done uh, got the inventory um, really we need to figure out a way to inject the different context is context is contexts <laughs> for each of these things so that could be useful to do because not all items will probably be use usable and there'll be all kinds of different things that we uh, need there. Okay. Uh, maybe we could try to do like the item use listener as well. Could be something to do. Uh, let me go to... Actually, we can do it in this scene. Um, maybe we can have it so that the door is locked, for example, and you need to use a key. And actually, I'm going to use the other room then. So we'll start in here, and we'll have this door as like locked. Um, Trying to remember where we did the persistent stuff. Ah, savable object. Yeah. So it will have a savable object on it as well. And that will be called is logged to. And if it's true, then we set this to uh, is locked. And then if it's false, then we set it to not locked. Uh, no, not savable object. Door. Sorry. Door. Oh, we need to make that a public property or make a method for it. I don't mind making it public. Is this thing on? Oh, we have this set is locked property. Okay, so that will do set is locked. I missed that somehow. Set is locked false. By the way, the music is by Final Fantasy and Chill. Um, I will put it in the top comment. Hey, Darth Trident, not Trident. Um, oh, I guess comments come after. So I was thinking about uh, making like the item use listener which is something we use to listen for items being used <laughs> posh oh my god if only you knew <laughs> i'm like the uh i'm like a human trash bag <sighs> Okay, so we got the savable objects set up there. We'll also need to um, set that up in our savable um, pre 
not prefab, our scriptable we set up for the savable stuff. Room data config. Um, is door is locked. I'm gonna change it to is door locked. Uh, we could probably find a way to automate those things too. So we don't have to always add the new thing there, but still. Okay, so uh, I'm going to add something here. Yeah, we got to complete the inventory system. I think it's what most people are like uh, interested in right now. And it's good to finish things. It's for starting other things for sure. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to make a little trigger box where I want the player to be standing when the item's used. Um, and I'm going to turn the mesh renderer off. I might not actually take it off for now. Enemy behavior. Oh, yeah, that'll be fun to get to. Probably going to stick with just kind of state machines or hierarchical state machines for the behavior. I'm not going to go too advanced because like a lot of the time, I don't think it's, especially for games like this, it's not that necessary. You can kind of fake smart behavior kind of like my whole life. Uh, so I'm going to add a component here called item use listener. Okay, so when we use an item from the inventory, we're basically going to send out a static event with the item data or the item config. And then we're going to listen for that on all of these item use listeners. And if it has the item that it's looking for, then it can trigger something. Uh, so... Wait, item use listener. So we'll have a serialized private um, item config or item data. I can't remember what it's called. Item data uh, required item. Okay. And then we can have a private unity event. Um, and that's going to be called on item used. Okay. And then we're going to go on enable, on disable, because we're going to be listening to some events here. And we're going to say, uh, well, let's go to the inventory. Uh, player inventory. Oh, we've already got the own item used. Did we actually use this already? That's kind of funny. Maybe they're just there. Let me see. Maybe I was making it in preparation. Uh, on item used. Oh, okay, so the on item used, it just exits right now. So we can have it like um, close the menu, the inventory entirely. Player inventory dot instance dot close inventory. Uh, my friend bought it for me, but I haven't actually used it yet. Close inventory. Uh, I think I'm a bit stupid for that. I can't remember where we did the inventory like view stuff. Where do we handle this tab stuff? Um, Aha, uh -huh. update, exit to navigation. 
Okay, let's find the next tab. Tab. No. Really? Because I thought we used tab to exit. Hey, Amelia's. Thanks. Okay. I gotta be honest, I already don't like the inventory system. I might change it again at some point. <laughs> okay. I should be able to just search for tab. Let me just search for this line. Stop coding, zoom out. Maybe this is just a case of... <laughs> no, no worry, just card reverses. Inventory navigation dot set object to... So I guess it's in the inventory navigation. Inventory navigation. Oh wait, inventory UI controller. On exit inventory game instance dot exit. Okay, so we can just use this game manager dot instance dot exit. So on item used. Oh, I'm going to get rid of this for now so I don't leave it there and forget about it. Like all of the high, very high level actions, I think I've been tending to keep in the game state manager. So that's like where the very top commands come, kind of come down. Um, okay. So let's set the required item to the iron key. And then when we do that, we'll set this um let's just rename this to to use listen uh door where's our door okay so oops door door set is locked to not true okay so Let's go back into the item use listener. Um, we'll say inventory context manager. Uh, wait, where was it? This item use probably just in the player inventory dot on item used plus equals on item used. So we're making a method here which will listen to when that callback gets fired however you want to say it and then we make sure to deassign as well because if you don't do that you're going to end up with errors um okay so let's just debug.log item was used for now Okay, nothing's happening so far. I think I need to link up the buttons there. Um, inventory. Or oh, was it in the root? So, inventory, UI, context menu. Context menu panel, use, 
Ah, uh, we've got nothing going on here so far. That makes sense. So we'll go to here, player inventory, on use item, link that up. Oh, see, one of our exceptions we handled actually helped us. So I can remove this route so we don't get doubled up things. Okay, item was used, it's called now. And as you can see, it just instantly exits us out of that uh, inventory now. So now, um, we can do a uh, private mm, co box collider, box collider. Uh, and we're gonna say uh, like I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing before I actually do it so it's not too confusing so I'm gonna basically check if the like I've got this collider on me but the callbacks I get for that collider is like on trigger enter on trigger exit blah 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 but I want to check something um like exactly when this callback gets cast i could do it like while i'm in the on collision stay but i'll show you how to do this box cast or overlap box because i think it's quite a useful thing to learn if um if physics dot overlap box so overlap box just overlaps a box and we've got a box collider reference so we can just say box collider dot center box collider dot uh, extends um, and um, transform dot rotation oh it, it can't be an if because it's not it gives us like a list of collision information so if we just say Bar hits equals this. Ah, uh, use size. There we go. Okay. So we'll just say for now we'll just loop through these hits and say debug dot log hit dot game object. So let me just test by using an item over here first. Um, okay, we don't, we didn't um, get the box collider, so let's just do that in a wake. Box collider equals get component box collider. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so the collider just collided with the floor. We can probably set this to a layer so that it only detects the player. So let's add a layer here, um, player, player, uh, yeah, we can do it for children too, I suppose. Um, and then the layer mask can be uh, layer mask dot get mask player like that now hopefully it won't log anything if we're not the player oops oh okay okay we're getting a null if we're trying to do this twice in a row or when we leave the room and then come back so something to bear in mind oh no it's okay Okay, it happens if we do it thrice. <laughs> now, are you actually overlapping in? Uh, I might actually need a collider on him because I'm not sure if that um, character controller will generate that. Did I set his layer? Yes, I did. Item use listener door. Uh, okay.
let's drag this down here. Oh, hang on. We need to make this a trigger. Um, well, that's no good because we triggered the door already. Um, and I need to make it so it doesn't work if it's locked as well. Where's our door trigger? Let me just comment this out for now. Okay, make it a trigger as well. Okay, we're still not detecting it. And check that it's not going to work that way. Um, item uselessness trigger. Oh, well, it shouldn't actually matter, although we can't get into that area if it's not a trigger. So, okay, floor. Let's try giving him a, some kind of collider. Hmm. Ah, so I'm going to give him a collider and change the logic back to what it was before without this. Do, do, do. Strange. Let's just take this out in general to see if we can get it to call at all. Floor. I, th I think it might be to do with the, the shape of it. Hits physics dot overlap. Okay. Let me just check that it's not like a positioning thing. Okay, now it's getting the wall too. I'm so happy that it got the wall. Ah, oh, it might be because the center is like zero. That might be like a local position. Yeah, in the object's local place. Okay. So if I set it to the position. Uh, okay, we got the hero now. Good. I think I can take this box collider off now because I feel like the character controller kind of handles the collision. I think it has a collider component by default, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it does. Okay, so now I can add the layer mask back in. So layer mask dot get mask uh, player. can also just turn this back down to the size. Uh, okay, so now it just gets the hero. Um, let's go over here. And yeah, one more time and then we crash it. Very interesting. I think it, ju it just needs the, like the process Every the order that things are done is probably I forgot something. Okay, if we want to see where this box is, we can also um, do like an on draw gizmos. 
gizmos dot draw cube. Transform dot position. Box collider dot size. We'll just say if box collider is null, we'll return. Because this can run in edit mode as well. And Oh yeah, I forgot the matrix is going to be off and I can't be bothered to calculate it now. Ah. Yeah, so it's not actually as big as we thought. Um, box collider dot size. Uh, bounds dot extents, that's probably what would be better. Okay, so I guess this is because it's the half extents. So if we times it by two, it should be closer to what we're expecting. Yeah, so that should kind of link up with that now. But yeah, the gizmos are good for figuring this kind of stuff out sometimes. Okay. Don't need that though, so let's get rid of that. Now, so the reason we have this a trigger here anyway is to see if we're actually in range of using that item. Um, so let's go call on item used now. Um, and we'll need to check, we'll say if uh, slot dot item data equals equals required item then we're gonna do this and we can do a little debug.log debug.log uh, correct item used okay so it's asking for this item key So if I go over here now, use that, nothing. Correct item used, see? And if we go look at the door now, uh, the is locked property has been turned off. So let's watch it from here to see that happening. Wait, what? Oh, it's because it has the save data default. Uh, so let me go to that resources again. Is locked. So let's set that to true. Okay, so now it's locked by default. Let's use this now. And as you can see, it's become unlocked. So what I'll do is I will turn off this door trigger. I'm gonna I'm gonna uncomment that so that we can actually use the the door again. Um, but what I'll do is on the doors um, set is locked callback. So if the door is locked, then we drag in the door trigger and we make it. Um, inactive then if the um, door is unlocked then we're gonna set the uh, wait then we're gonna set it to be active 
So you'll see when we, as soon as we start the game, because of our safe objects stuff, the door trigger should turn off when we start the game. Yeah. So now I can't use the door. It'd be funny if I could. Uh, use this. Okay. So the correct type is used. So now the trigger did not come back on. Uh -huh. Oh, wait, that's my bad. So what we need to do is also set the on item use listener callback. So we set the door to not be locked. And we also um, turn on the door trigger. Um, I've just realized this this whole door l locked thing is kind of redundant um, because we can just turn off the door trigger and do everything that way. Um, so let me just get rid of the redundant script. So select this door, I'm going to get rid of that. Door. Remove that. So the only thing we need to do is set this um, set this door trigger to be on or off. That should be it. Okay. So I can't use it. Ah, now we got a. Um, it worked. Um, also, we need to fix this because this isn't being properly saved. Um, so it worked, but then it kind of booted us out of there. Um, so interaction, what was it called? Player controller. Get button down. And Okay, so what I might do is just say player controller dot wait which one is it? Player controller. Uh, I should probably set up a singleton for that guy. Um but let's just do him like this for now player oh we can just do it here hit dot game object dot get component player controller dot unpossess and then after we've invoked that thing we can possess him again it should work Maybe, maybe, maybe. Nope, that's good. Uh. <laughs> well, there's ways we can hack this, but I don't know if I'm gonna if I want to do it this way. So correct type used. Exit inventory. Let's just see what happens when we exit inventory because I think, yeah, we're doing this possess. Um, let me just think about this for a second, the best way to do it. Oh, and it's funny we're walking forever when we're in the inventory. Okay. So, I can hack this 
late for now, but we should probably change it. No, actually, no, that will be a bad one. I was going to say we could make it just happen when we press the key up. Um, but what I might do is private follow time possessed. Um, so on, on possess, on unpossessed, we'll say time possessed equals zero F. Um, we'll say, I'm just going to put in a little buffer here, by the way. Time possessed plus equals time dot delta time. Uh, we'll say if time possessed is less than 10, for example, just so it doesn't keep going forever. Time possessed plus equals time dot delta time. And then we'll say if time possessed is less than 0 0.0 or 0 0.1 F return. Uh, so that will give us like a little buffer. Do what it should do. Bruh. It's, it, it's because it's catching it on the same frame. Um. Time possessed equals. Ah, uh, maybe if I do it like on possess. Okay, that worked. But now, any more? So. We got this little buffer now. Um, we can use that and then we can open the door. Okay, now if I go back, we've got a problem. Nice dude. This one is gonna be more RE to be honest. My other game is more Silent Hill. Um, yeah. With some moving ones too. Okay. So, uh, what the fuck was I doing? Okay, so the door trigger isn't coming back on. So if we look at our state here, save for object. So if the value is false, then we're gonna activate the door trigger. Now let's have a look at our saved data. Let's watch it as it happens, because that should be locking that. Um, so is door locked. Okay, so we need to update this saved stuff but it's not updating. I'm trying to remember where the item take stuff works. Okay. Let me just give this some other material. Okay, so we picked up that. Now let's look in our saved data manager. 
is keep taken is true. Now let me just look in here. Uh, oh, okay. We we forgot to set the value on the savable object. So let's go to this item use listener, and also we might as well put the savable object on the item use listener here. And now on the item use listener, let's have a savable object, savable object. Um, get that in a wake. And then if we do that, we'll just save savable object dot set value true. Uh, actually, it needs to be false. So let's just set it to false for now. Although it's probably something that's gonna hang on. Private ball, make it a serialized field. Um, on item used value. Okay. Then we'll just set it to that so we can have it as true or false depending on our each item used listener so on item used then we should do it like that okay uh, let me fix this camera angle a second where did the dog oh god I deleted the door, but the door had the door on it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so everything should work now. So we can't use the door. We open this, use the key, and we can open it, go back, and then, yep. Okay, so the, the door is now saved. The locked state of it is now saved. Do it again, let's watch it from this. Um, I'm a useless now. Or let's just watch the door trigger so that we know that it's actually working. So I'm spamming it, trying to use the door, nothing. Then I will use the iron key. The door trigger turns on, I go out, I come back in, and the door trigger is on. So the state has been staved. Uh, yeah, I need to, I gotta be honest, I really wanna redo the inventory because it feels a bit uh, jank already. Inventory navigation refresh. So I think the inventory navigation is like, um, it's being turned off at some point and then it hasn't been turned back on, I suppose. So, okay, we go into inventory navigation. We go into the context menu. Then we use this. Then we open this again. And yeah, as I thought, the inventory navigation just didn't get set up again. So let's have a look at the things that need to happen. Okay. So we'll go to this um, context menu. So we'll say exit to navigation. 
and then we'll exit the inventory after that. That should fix things, I think. Uh, almost. Also, the there's a bit of an input buffer there. This well, it's too long. This buffer that we put in. Let's do it just 0 0.1. Okay. You have a look at this right now. Okay. On use item. If amount of stack is greater than one, remove item. Okay, so the inventory navigation needs to um, needs to be on because right now it's just not active, so that's throwing an error. We also need to deal with the like removing the item. We'll probably have it like an option for things that don't necessarily get removed. Let me just keep spamming this, see if I can break it. Yeah, so it's, it's broken now, and this is why I want to redo it. There's too many like um, side effects that are happening right now. Let's go to the context menu here. On item used. Um, let's use the item there. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I think I'm going to have to refactor it or just completely remake the inventory. To be honest, it's not, I'm not happy with it. Uh, but to be honest, I'm way too tired to do it today. 
my brain is like mashed potato. So we did something at least, but yeah, I'm probably gonna end it today. Sorry, I usually do it for longer, but made it to about an hour anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it's, the, the problem is that, like, I have been working on this, like, every few weeks, two months, you know, it's like, it's not something that I do, it's not something that I use, or it's something I work on often, so, like, it, every time I open a project, I'm having to learn everything again, like, how everything's connected, so it's like, ugh, yeah, I need to do it more often, to be honest. Okay, yeah. Thanks for understanding, guys. I'll see you later.